Okay. <clears throat> All right. So on Friday, we took a look at, um, at some more uh, valid, uh, parameterization of pages. We took a look at uh, submitting information from a file, um, uh, sorry, from a, a, a form. We looked at creating a self-submitting form, a PHP script that has a form. And when you load the page initially, it uses what's called a get request, and it displays the form. That form then submits back to itself. So this turnin.php page submits back to turnin.php. Um, and on the second loading of this page, uh, when this form is submitted, it submits using what's called a post request instead of a get request. Um, and the PHP script recognizes that. And when uh, the PHP script is executed using a post request, it does something different. It uh, validates the form and it displays uh, something different. Um, so in this example, um, let's see. So we're loading turnin.php here. Um, we have a couple of error messages that I'd like to get rid of, and I'd like to clean this up a little bit more. Um, uh, for example, we have a, an error message here when we're loading the page initially. Um, we don't want that error message to show up. Um, so we want to do, uh, we want to add a couple more things to this page to make it uh, a little bit, a little bit nicer. We also want to clean up the validation a little bit more. We started getting into uh, validation, trying to make sure that some of these values are correct. And if the values are, the supplied values are not correct, then we're going to redisplay the form. Um, a couple more things that we need to do to clean that up. Um, first of all, when we submit the page, and then we uh, we have an error in the form submission, um, it'd be nice if we um, redisplayed the values that were entered here. Currently, it just displays a, a completely blank form again. So I want to clean this up a little bit more. Um, let's just sort of like submit something here. We can say that oh, Firefox is really slow today. Load a file. I'm going to submit turnin.php. I have academic integrity, so I'm going to turn it in. Um, and it says, thank you, excellent. Um, I, I was able to, to accept everything. It passed my validation checks, excellent. Um, uh, we, we also looked at this issue here of, of file permissions. Um, sometimes, uh, so in order for the web server process, the program, to be able to write uh, a file, um, it needs to have permission to do that. And uh, oftentimes, a, a web server, the, the user that the web server runs as, there's sort of a virtual user on your computer or on the web server um, that's different from your username or different from you know, somebody else's username. Um, it's a virtual user on the, on the machine that only has restricted permissions. So you have to explicitly allow it to write files. Um, in your directory. So I need to, uh, because I've created this new directory, I need to go and, and set the file permissions there in order for mkdir make directory to be able to write uh, to uh, the, the form, the, the, be able to save the form submission. Um, <clears throat> okay, so we're going to need to clean this up a little bit. So let's take a look at that. OK. Um, this is our page. We're going to have to do a couple different things here to clean it up a little bit. <clears throat> so we're getting a couple of error messages at the top of the page. Notice undefined index SID. Notice undefined index section and assignment. Um, what do you think these mean? Let's take a look at our code. Okay. Well, here's where we're trying to set up the variable. So we have a, a variable, a, an SID variable, a section variable, assignment variable. Um, but it's, say, it's saying undefined index SID line 8, section line 9, assignment line 10. So on, on each of these lines, the, the, those are the lines where we're trying to do that. Um, so the error comes from here. 
We're looking for something to have been posted. Um, so we're looking in the post super global for a, a value called SID, a value called section, a value called assignment. Nothing was posted. This is a get request. So these values don't exist in the post super global yet. Right. So we can we can only do this um, if the the form was submitted. If the form was not submitted, then we don't want to do this. We uh, we can't get these values. Um, <clears throat> so let's let's do this. Let's um, uh, actually. Although uh, we're actually going to uh, we're going to need values for these later on, but uh, we'll just do this for now. If so, how do we check to see whether the the submission was a uh, the, the the request was a get or a post? We use the this the server request method. We check to see if that was get or if, if it was post. So if server request method equals post, then we want to do all this stuff. Okay, um, we're going to run into an issue here where so. Uh, when, it, when the, the, the submission was a post, we're going to perform some validation. Um, and in that case, I declare a, a variable here called valid. Um, and down here, I check to see, OK, if the request method was a get, I'm going to display the form. Or maybe it was a post, but the, 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 the submitted data was not valid. So if the, vada, the data was not valid up here, I'm, submitting, I'm uh, setting valid to false. I'm going to have to move this valid equals true outside of this form here, or this, uh, this if statement here, just so that uh, we don't have uh, uh, PHP complain that the valid variable doesn't exist. Um, so we're going to do that. Okay. All right, so what we should see now is when we refresh the page, we're going to have no errors here, and we're going to um, we're going to have no error message there. Oh, in the wrong folder. So no error messages now. Um, next thing I want to do is I want to make it so that when we submit the form, so say more than, but I forget to supply a student ID. I do have a supply a section. One more, I'll just forget about code because um, we're not checking for that. Error, you filled it out wrong. Um, but I don't see the values that I previously entered. It's much nicer if I actually see those. So um, how would we go about doing that? How do we go about sort of uh, pre-filling in the form with the values that were submitted? Um, first of all, how do we actually make values appear in those text boxes? And how do we actually select stuff? So do you remember the... Uh, we can have uh, different uh, attributes on these input tags. Remember the attribute that's responsible for pre-filling in uh, a, a yeah, value. So we can say value equals something. Value equals something. And that something can be the form submission. But uh, the, the, the value that was submitted. But if there was nothing submitted, then I want to put nothing here. So how about if we do this, we can come up here and we know that if the server request method was post, then we're going to override, we're going to, we're going to set these variables here. Why don't I say that I'm just going to declare those variables up here, SID equals empty string, section equals empty string, assignment equals empty string. And then uh, these will get overridden with new values if the, if the form submission was a post. So then down here, I can be assured that those, those variables exist. And I can, how do I insert the value in here using PHP? 
called uh, an expression block, right? Equals, so this is going to be name. Do I have a name up there? If not, I need to, I need to, I need to make one. SID, this is going to be SID. Okay. Let's make sure I have a name. I don't have a name yet, so I'll do that. Name equals empty string. We'll copy and paste one of these, and we'll change it to name. Name. Um, <clears throat> so section is going to be a little bit different. So name and SID, these are uh, text fields, right? So we use value equals blah, blah, blah for those. Section is going to be a little bit different. That's done using a drop-down box, right? And assignment is done using um, uh, radio buttons. So, so for the section, how do I pre-populate one of these sections? Yeah. Yeah, uh, so it's, it's an attribute. I have to uh, add an attribute here, selected equals selected. Right, so how do I select whichever one has been submitted? This is going to get a little bit tricky. Yeah. Yeah, so I think the easiest thing to do, so we could, we could like just do like an if-else statement for each of these. If the, the, the value of, um, of section equals AA, then output selected equals selected for this one. And then for the next one, if the value of uh, section equals AC, then output selected equals selected here. Um, but that's a little bit cumbersome. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, that's a little bit cumbersome to, to do for every single one. So I think I'm going to do a, um, I'm going to change this into a for loop to generate these options. Um, and inside of the for loop, I can just do that, that test once. So I'm going to do a for loop here. HP, um, this can be a condensed for loop. So for each, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to de declare an associative array that maps the section names to the TAs. So I'm going to say AA, and then this is the special um, uh, associative array syntax. We have the key, and then the double arrow thing, and then value. So Nick Holden. Um, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this array up to the beginning of the file, so that this is sort of like a constant throughout the file. So I'm just going to say, um, TAs equals array, blah, blah, blah. And then I can format this a little bit nicer. Okay, and we'll just sort of copy all these things up there. Okay. AA is Nick Holden. And we can just sort of delete all this stuff. Now I've got my associative array here that maps um, that's the, the section to the TA names. I can come down here and uh, for each um, TAs as uh, section arrow name. So the key goes before the, uh, the arrow and the value goes after the arrow. Then what I'm going to do is inside the loop here, I'm just going to option value equals expression block section. Put the section there. I'm going to also put the section here. And I'm going to put the name in, in between the parentheses here. Name. Uh, let's make this TA name just so we don't have, uh, we already have a variable called name in the uh, global scope. And so let's make this student 
name, just so that we don't have any problems. Na student name, and then the name is over here. Okay. So let's just refresh this real quick, and we'll see the form generate. Uh, the PHP script will generate this, so there's no there's no change here. We'll just prove that it's actually doing something by going up here and like changing this to QX or something. So QX, Kevin. Okay. Um, so what I want to do is uh, inside of this for loop, what I can do is I can test to see whether um, whether section is equal to, um, okay, so we also have a problem up here, so section, we have another super global, uh, global variable up here called section, so we're going to need to say like, um, uh, we'll call this uh, TA underscore section, and then we'll just like, go TA, TA section, so we're going to test to see whether TA section is equal to the global section. Um, and if so, we're going to output selected equals selected um, for this option. Um, in order to do this, I'm going to do something that's a little bit tough to read, um, but it's uh, a great way of doing this. It's uh, called the ternary operator. We, we, uh, we looked at this once before. Um, I'm going to say, is TA section equal to section? If so, I'm going to output selected equals selected, else I'm going to output an empty string. So what will be output using this expression block will be select space selected equals selected uh, if this is true, and it'll be empty string otherwise. So if we select QX and we submit, QX becomes selected the next time. We can look at the source code here. And it's not going to give us the... Uh, there we go. Because it was a post, it, it didn't want to give us the source of that. Um, so... Oh. Uh, we might need to select this, uh, inspect this using Firebug. So select name equals section. And then we can see that the selected attribute has been applied to this option. Okay. Um, for the rest of the stuff, so error, you filled it out wrong. Undefined index assignment. So let's make sure we've got assignment up there. Let's see. Assignment. Post assignment. Um, <clears throat> Uh, actually, for each of these, what I'm going to need to do, so the, the problem here, so we've got undefined index assignment on line 28. Line 28. Okay, what's, what's the problem here? We're still having a problem with undefined index, even though it was a post. What's the problem with this? Did we select one of the assignments when we submitted the form? Let's go look at Firebug and uh, see what the, the submitted values were. I'm going to look at the net tab and open this post here. This is the, the request. This is the submission uh, for this page. If I open this up, I can click on this post header here, and I can see the values that were submitted during this form submission. And we have four parameters were submitted. None of these was assignment. So we didn't select one of the assignment uh, options. So it's not submitting a parameter for that. Um, so the quickest thing to do, um, actually, so what we're going to need to do, and this was brought up uh, in lecture, I believe, on Wednesday of last week. Um, so for each of these, we're going to need to make sure that that parameter actually exists. So if, if nothing was submitted for that parameter, if, if no value was submitted at all, we're going to need to uh, you know, avoid this error. So, um, and we, this is something that we were doing. We were having a bunch of if-else statements. If, if this parameter is set, then I'm going to define it to this. 
else I'm going to define it to this other thing. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a function um, where I pass in the name of the parameter that I want. It's going to give me that, or it's going to default to an empty string if that doesn't exist. <clears throat> so this would be very useful to avoid that, uh, uh, that error message. So function get get param. I'm going to say the name of the parameter and the default value, which I will, by default, I will make that, uh, let's make that null by default. So I will say if is set post name, so this will be the name of the parameter. I'm looking for the value in post with, of that name. Then I'm going to return post bracket name, else return default. So I remember that what I'm doing here is I'm making this parameter optional, and if it's not supplied, then I'm defaulting to null. So the default defaults to null. Um, so if I if I if I want to get the parameter um, uh, assignment. And if the value was not supplied, if there was nothing supplied for that, maybe I want to default to 1 or something, hw1, then I can pass as the second parameter hw1. Otherwise, if I don't pass a parameter here, um, it, it'll just return null by default. The function will return null. OK, so we'll add that up here, get param. Um, and for most of these, I'm just not going to pass a second parameter. Um, get param get param get param so that's gonna default to null let's see I'm gonna um, I'm gonna do something similar for uh, for these radio buttons down here to what I did uh, for the uh, the section up here. I'm going to sort of copy this down here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to output a radio button for each homework assignment. Um, and I'm just going to use a regular for loop for this for dollar sign i equals one, dollar sign i less than or equal to three, dollar sign i plus plus. We're going to output value equals i. Oh, actually, let's make this an n. I feel better about an n for this. n, n. Then we'll say homework, n. Uh, and so that will output each of the radio buttons. And then what we can do is we can say, we can do the same sort of ternary operator here. We can say, uh, assignment is equal to n. If so, we'll say checked equals checked. That's the, the way that you check a uh, radio button or a select box, or a uh, uh, checkbox. Otherwise, we're going to make it empty string. So uh, when we ref refresh this page, even though we didn't select one of these homework assignments uh, when we submitted it before, this error will go away by virtue of the fact that we're now just sort of checking to see whether the parameter is passed. And if not, we're defaulting to an empty string. Uh, and then, uh, so we should do that, check to see that. Um, line 28. Get param. Oh. Uh, I need to take the post out of all of these. Because the function get param is looking inside post for us for the parameter of the supplied name that we're passing. 
Okay. So refresh now. That error will go away. And uh, then when we select a homework assignment now and we hit submit, it's going to refresh and it's going to select whichever one we previously selected. So let's see, Morgan. Okay. Um, so we're not doing uh, certain checks yet. Um, we're going to do a few more checks. We can refresh this page. We're going to do a few more checks. Uh, for example, we, we didn't check to see that a file was uh, submitted. We didn't really check to make sure the academic integrity box was checked. Um, we could do more checks, but we're, not, we're going to sort of skip that for now and move on to um, some, some more material for today, and then we'll flesh out the rest of this uh, later on in lecture. So what we're going to look at today <coughs> is uh, a little bit more in-depth uh, we're going to go a little more in depth into validation. Um, validation is uh, a really, really important part of accepting information. You have to make sure that the information that's passed is either correct, like it's actual real valid da data, or at least plausibly correct. Um, and uh, the results of not checking for this could be, um, could be very bad. We'll look at, um, at sort of security ramifications of this later on in the quarter. Um, but uh, at, at, at very least, if we want to create an account, for example, if the user is registering for account, we need to make sure that there's a username and that you know it doesn't have any spaces in it, and then maybe like you know that that the email it looks like a valid email address, like you can't just type gibberish in the email address box, um, things like that. We need to make sure that 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 values are at least plausibly correct before we will allow them to continue. Um, so, uh, validation involves validation involves ensuring that a form's values are correct to some degree. Uh, for, uh, there are several examples here. Um, this is an example of a form that uses validation, uh, and uh, we've we've entered incorrect data for some of these. And the website has kindly given us a, a useful error message to tell us uh, exactly which things have gone wrong. This is an example of a form to be validated. Sort of the canonical examples are city, state, and zip code because these are fairly easy to, uh, to check, especially state and zip code. Um, state, in, uh, state um, if this is an abbreviation, um, we might want to check to see that, for example, it's only two characters and those characters are alphabetic characters. They're not gibberish, they're not numbers. They're alphabetic characters specifically. A zip code, for, uh, for example, obviously we don't want it to be a, a string, just any string of, number, uh, of characters. We want it to be five numbered uh, characters. Um, so um, at, at, the, at the very basic level, we can check to see if the string, the length of the string is two, uh, or the length of the zip is five, but that still doesn't check to see whether they're you know, the correct kinds of characters. So we need to uh, find a way to, um, actually I've, I've skipped over one of the slides that I wanted to show. We need to find a, a way to check to see whether they match a particular pattern uh, or a, a more complex format. Um, I'm going to go to the local version. So add to slide. Um, there are different degrees of validation, um, so I can, uh, at, the, at the, the lowest level of validation, I can just make sure that some values are present, that they're not empty, that they're, you know, the correct type or something. I can check to see if the, the supplied zip code is an int, for example, if it casts to an int and it's non-null or something, then, you know, it's an int, um, and, uh, and that'll, you know, possibly work. Um, uh, for a state, you know, for, for all of these, these examples, pretty much, um, I, I can just sort of basically just check to see if it's present. Uh, a, a more robust level of validation might be to check that the zip code is a five-digit number, and maybe that, you know, it's not all zeros, or it's not all ones, or it's not all, like, you know, I can, maybe there's an algorithm I can run the zip code through to see if it's, like, uh, a, a valid zip code. Um, uh, state abbreviation, two alphabetic characters, um, credit card number 16 should be 16 digits, and um, there's also something called the Ruhr algorithm, 
that you can uh, give, you can supply a, a string of characters um, and a, a string of digits, and it uses that number. It, it calculates, the, you know, it does some math on that number to uh, to see if it's a plausibly valid uh, credit card number. Um, so all credit card numbers actually adhere to certain uh, mathematical algorithm that's used to generate them. Um, if you pass them through something that, that validates that, then you can check to see if it's a valid number. Um, <clears throat> but then there's the highest level of validation is to check that something is actually real. So for example, if we supply a city, we can check to see that that is a real city in the particular state that we specify. So we have to you know, check the state as well. Uh, the state, we have to check to see whether that's an existing state abbreviation for one of the 60-odd U.S. quote-unquote states. Um, and, uh, and then the zip code, we have to check that it is actually a valid zip code in that city and so on. Uh, for a credit card number, we check to see that that's actually a registered account. So that's the highest level. We're going to focus today on this medium level here. Let me just turn this down. Other direction. Okay. Um, yeah. Go ahead. So, when you bring out this validation, you're going to have to have access to a very large database, of course, um, <clears throat> to make sure that you're doing proper validation. And also, you have to make sure that this server has access, access to, has the ability to read that in whatever language, right. et cetera. Right, if we're doing the highest level of validation, then we need to have access to a database or a service that will allow us to perform these kinds of checks. Um, we're not gonna focus on that today. What we're gonna focus on today is this medium level here. We're gonna focus on seeing if, if it's a plausibly correct value uh, by seeing if it adheres to some sort of pattern. Um, and that's where, I'm gonna turn this around, I think. That's where regular expressions come in. Regular expressions are, a, um, are an extremely useful thing. Uh, their, their learning curve is very high, very high learning curve. This is a regular expression right here. And what this does is this precisely describes the pattern uh, that, I, that I will allow a certain value to, to have. Um, this particular regular expression is for uh, an email address. So this checks to see whether an email address adheres to the correct email address format. It doesn't have any spaces in it. It has uh, some alphabetical characters or dashes or underscores before uh, an at sign, then it has an at sign, and then it has uh, you know, something that's a, a plausibly correct um, top level domain format. Um, this entire thing looks like gibberish. It, it looks, it, it's really, really difficult to read. Regular expressions are extremely powerful, but they're total, they look like total gibberish. Um, so once you learn to use regular expressions, and once you learn to recognize them and learn to develop them um, uh, uh, accurately and correctly, um, they can be extremely, extremely powerful. Um, uh, one, one apt uh, description of regular expressions. Um, they're, they're kind of a jumble of characters. Uh, a basic regular expression, so most regular expressions, uh, we sort of put inside slashes to indicate that it's a regular expression. Um, they don't have to be inside slashes, but that's sort of the, the default standard. Um, so the, this regular expression matches the string ABC. Fairly straightforward. A character followed by a B character followed by a C character, in that order. Uh, this will match uh, this will match a substring of a particular string. It doesn't match the entire string. It doesn't say that the string has to be exactly ABC. It will match exactly ABC. It will match something that begins with ABC. It will match something that, be, uh, that ends with ABC or has ABC in the middle of it. So ABC is somewhere in that string. It will not match something with uh, CBA, the reverse order. It will match so not match something with a space in between the B and the C. It won't match you know, something that completely doesn't have any of those characters and so on. A wildcard character, the dot 
It is a special character in regular expressions. It means anything. Uh, so whenever you use the dot character, it stands in for any possible characters. So dot o dot y matches Ducey, Goofy, and Looney. Um, it matches any of these. It's a single character. It's not um, any number of characters. It's just a single character in that slot. Uh, we can also add an I at the end if we want to match case insensitivity, I for insensitive. Um, so M-A-R-T matches Marty with a capital M, uh, all lowercase, and Walmart, all, all uppercase, and so on. A couple more special characters. Uh, the pipe character here, this is the shift of, uh, of the backslash. That means or, so uh, the, this, this uh, will match A, B, C, or D, E, F, or G. So it'll match anything with A, B, C in it, or it'll match anything with D, E, F in it, or it'll match anything with a G. Um, so for example, I can do, uh, let me just open up some scratch here. So um, A, B, C, or D, E, F, or G will match a, B, C, D, E, F, G. Obviously, because it has all three of those. Um, it'll match foo, A, B, C. It'll match foog. Um, it'll match uh, basically anything with any one of these three in it. So it doesn't have to have all three. It'll, uh, as long as it has one of those, it's fine. <clears throat> Parentheses are for grouping. So Homer or Marge Simpson. So it'll match Homer Simpson or Marge Simpson. A backslash starts an escape sequence. Um, if you want to match a special regular expression character literally, so for example, the dot character and these, uh, the or character and these parentheses, those are all special characters in regular expressions. So if you don't want them to be special anymore, if you want to actually mat match a uh, left paren, or if you want to actually match a dot character, you're going to have to backslash it. Um, a good example of that right here is on this slide. Um, if you want to match a BR tag, oftentimes regular expressions begin and end with a slash. When it does begin and end with a slash, then the slash usually indicates the end of the regular expression. So if you have slashes there, if you want to match a slash inside the regular expression, you're going to have to escape it. <clears throat> uh, quantifiers. Quantifiers are repetitions of whatever precedes it. So a star, uh, star means zero or more occurrences of whatever preceded it. So uh, ABC star matches AB because that has zero Cs, so that matches. ABC has one C, ABC C has two Cs, and so on. Um, of course, it will also match, so ABC star will also match um, ABCD. Right, because that's one C, right? So C star matches one C. It would also match A, B, D, because that's zero Cs. Uh, a parentheses B, C star matches A, because that's zero B, Cs. One B, C, two B, Cs, three B, Cs, and so on. But it also matches, so let's see, A, B, C star also matches A, B, C, B, right? Because that's A followed by one B, C, also matches A, B, right? Because that's A followed by zero B, Cs. And the entire uh, regular expression is a substring. A dot star A, so this is um, zero or more of anything. So A A is A followed by zero of anything followed by A. A B A is one B, A eight Q A, and so on. So we can have any number of characters inside, in between A's including, uh, including nothing. A plus means one or more occurrence, so that character has to be there at least once can be there more than once, but it has to be there at least once. So high, let's see, so high plus, exclamation point plus there matches high, uh, followed by any number of exclamation points greater than, greater than or equal to one. So A, paren, B, C plus 
requires a BC, A paren BC plus requires a BC, so it matches ABC, ABC, BC, and so on. Any number of repetitions of that, but it also matches, for example, ABC, B, because that's A followed by one BC. Question mark, zero or one, it's there or it's not. It can be there or not. Uh, so A, B, C, question mark, A or A, B, C. But of course, it will also match. So A, B, C, question mark, A, A, B, C. It'll also match A, B, C, B, C, right? And, you know, A, B, C, D. It'll also match A, D and so on, because that's zero BCs. And that as well. <clears throat> okay, so let's, um, no, let's do, let's do this and then we'll move on to the practice exercises. Um, so uh, if you want a, a, a more precise range of, of repetitions, you can use uh, curly braces in which you can specify a minimum number of repetitions and a maximum number of repetitions. So the star is zero or more, the plus is one or more, and the question mark is zero or one. If you want more of a flexible range of, of repetitions, use the curly braces. So A, B, C, two comma four will match anywhere between two and four repetitions of A followed by B, C. But again, A, B, C, two comma four, this will match A, B, C, B, C. So that's two repetitions. Um, it'll also match A, so one, two, three, four, five. It'll also match five repetitions because that's, that fits. A followed by four B, Cs. And, and uh, the, the regular expression matches a substring. So this does not enforce that it has to be a precisely four. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll see a, a method later uh, for enforcing that this has to be exactly four. <clears throat> so two comma nothing means two or more. Nothing comma six means up to six and three means exactly three. Okay. So when you search Google, it shows the number of pages uh, of results as O's in the word Google. Um, so what regular expression matches strings like G-O-O, G-O-O-O, G-O-O-O, and so on? Yeah. Dot plus. So let's say, so dot plus. O plus. So is this the entire regular expression? So yeah, G-O plus. G L E, right? So, uh, is that correct? No, because that will match G O G L E as well, right? And it, there has to be, you know, two at least, right? So, how could we make it at least two? Yeah, we so we can do two comma anything. Um, that's probably the best way of doing it. Um, or we can just say, you know, we can add an O there and say O O plus. So that's O followed by one or more O's. OK. Excellent. OK. So uh, this is the approach for um, restricting the, the scope of um, uh, and ensuring that, that a string matches entirely. So I keep pointing out the fact that, for example, um, this two comma four will still match five repetitions of BCBC, BC, right? So how do we make it match precisely that range of, of BCBCs? Well, uh, in order to do that, we uh, use what are called anchors. Um, anchors are special characters that indicate the start or the end of the string. So the, the, the carrot, this upper carrot represents the start, this dollar sign represents the end. So Jess matches anything that contains Jess. Could be in the middle, could be in the end, could be in the beginning, whatever. If you want to ensure that it matches Jess at the beginning, then we put this care 
before it to indicate that this is the start of the string. So start of the string followed by J, basically is what that means. Same thing with the end, S followed by the end of the string. If you want to ensure that Jess is the entirety of the string, it's not just a substring, it's equal to the entire string, then we specify both the beginning and the end anchors. Beginning followed by J, followed by E, followed by S, followed by S, followed by end of the string. Um, mart dot star step matches anything that begins with mart followed by any zero more of anything followed by step and it has to end with step. So Marty step, it won't map, uh, match Marty step stinks because step is not at the end of the string. Step has to be at the end of the string. Um, it will match Mart step, Marty step, Martin D step, and so on. It won't match this because Mart is not at the beginning of the string. So how would we modify this, for example, so that it matches precisely up to four? So between two and four repetitions of BC. Yep, just put a dollar sign at the end. And uh, that, that means that it, uh, it has to be followed by um, uh, nothing. Um, <clears throat> uh, if we wanted it to be followed by something else, then uh, we'd have to specify something else, but this is fine. Um, if we want to make sure that we prohibit something like this, um, we want to make sure that it begins with uh, A, B, C, B, C. Then we would uh, add the beginning anchor. Same thing up here. If we want to eliminate the possibility that it begins with something else. Um, actually, that's a, let's not do that one. Let's do this one. Uh, if we want to make sure that it doesn't end with something other than BC, then we would just say dollar sign at the end of that. So it has to end with some sequence of BC. Um, <clears throat> okay. Character sets. Brackets are special and regular expressions as well. They indicate that this single spot, this single slot, this single character can be anything, any of the characters inside of the, the, the brackets. So B, C, D, art will match any one of these characters followed by A, R, T. So it'll match Bart or Cart or Dart. So it's, it's equivalent to doing this, B or C or D followed by art. Um, the great thing about uh, character sets, though, is you can, uh, you can specify ranges. Oh, we'll see that in a second. So this will specify uh, what followed by any of these characters here. So what followed by none of those characters or any combination of those characters. Um, you notice that I have a star inside of here. It's a special rule of regular expressions inside of the character sets. Um, the stuff that, I also have a question mark here. So star and question mark are special in regular expressions, but inside of the square brackets, all of a sudden they become not special. So you don't have to escape them anymore. Uh, okay, so uh, what regular expression matches DNA, strings of A, C, G, or T? So the entire string has to consist of just those. Uh, any combination of just those four characters. So starts with, ends, and then what in between? Uh, uh, so the brackets? Yeah. Uh, so A, C, G, T. Star. Uh, so star will match zero of them. Maybe we want to have at least one or something. Uh, but that's fine. Um, <clears throat> excellent. So this one doesn't uh, take into account the beginning and end. Uh, so that's probably a good idea to do that. So uh, character ranges, so uh, inside of, of uh, uh, square brackets, you can do uh, ranges of characters. So it knows that the A character through the Z character, that's a range of characters. So it'll match anything that's lowercase. Um, you can also do uppercase range, zero through nine. Um, so it'll, so this in this single slot here uh, can be any of these characters. Um, 
if you put a caret inside of a square bracket, that negates that. So this, this character here can be anything that's not one of these. So that's a useful thing to negate. Um, let's see, inside a character, ex, uh, inside a character set, um, the, the dash is special because it indicates a range, so it has to be escaped. But everything else that's, that's special outside of the character set doesn't have to be escaped. <clears throat> okay. What writing expression matches letter grades such as A, B plus, or D minus? A, B plus, or D minus? So we're going to have to have some letter grades followed by something else, right? So we have we have the letter followed by plus or minus, right? And there's sort of a range of those possible letters, right? Yeah. Hey, F. Plus, oh, uh, for the character set here. Uh, so, we, okay, so inside a character range, we don't have to escape the plus, but then we do escape the minus because that normally indicates a range, so we want it to be a literal minus. Question mark? Yes, question mark. So it could be followed by one of those or not. So it can be an A or it can be an A plus or it can be an A minus. Um, I think we might need to make some slight refinements to this. Um, if we want to match just uh, a letter grade, not look for it in, in some, inside some other string, we want to match just the letter grade itself, what do we need? The caret at the beginning and the dollar sign at the end. Um, there's also, I think we're, we're we, uh, there's something a little bit wrong with this range here. I don't think, I, like technically I don't think there's like a D plus or D minus, I don't think, and there's also no E. Now, there might be D plus and D minus, but there's no E, right? So we can say A through D or F. Uh, but then F, there's no like plus or minus, right? It's just F, right? So how would we account for that? Yeah. Yeah, so we can do parentheses, all of that, or just F. Move the F out of there. So A through D followed by plus or minus optionally, or just F. So it's starting to look a little bit, you know, a little bit more digestible, right? <clears throat> uh, UW student ID numbers. Um, this is a pretty straightforward one. What's that? Zero through nine. So. 0 through 9. Exactly. So is it 7? I thought it was 8. 7 or 8, something like that. Oh. <laughs> uh, and then we're going to have to have that. Right? Sorry, say it again. One more time. Oh, the carrot? This? Oh, yeah, yeah, we have to have that, and we have to have that. If we want to match the entire string, we want to make sure that it has nothing else other than that in it. What regular expression would match a sequence of only consonants, assuming that the string consists of only lowercase letters? Only consonants. Oh, actually, maybe we should refine this one to uh, only be uppercase letters. So I, I think we made that uh, lowercase, so we just have to say A, D, F. Only consonants, assuming that uh, the string consists of only lowercase letters. Only consonants. So there are two different approaches. We could either explicitly specify all of the consonants, right, which is a lot, or we could what? 
we could exclude the vowels. How would we exclude the vowels? Yeah, inside of the square brackets, the caret negates. So we can say not a e i o u. Um, a sequence of only consonants, assuming the string consists of only lowercase letters. Okay, so not a e o i o u, maybe plus, um, and then beginning and ending with that. Looks good. Um, oh, uh, yes, okay, so this, only consonants, yeah, we also have to specify, like, specify, you know, not zero through nine and stuff like that. Um, yeah, so there are actually a lot more characters that, so if we just negate A, E, I, O, and U, there's actually, like, tons and tons of characters that, that are, are actually possible. So actually, in reality, we might have to explicitly specify the constant, consonants so instead. Assuming all lowercase. Oh, assuming, yes, assuming all lowercase, yeah, that's very good, thank you. If we assume that it's all lowercase, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Programming languages are much, much more readable than these regular expressions by far. Um, regular expressions, you, uh, most programming languages use regular expressions, and we'll get into uh, using regular expressions with PHP on Wednesday. Uh, we'll start with using uh, PHP functions to, uh, to match strings with regular expressions. Um, and uh, yeah, regu regular expressions are sort of uh, their own language unto themselves. Uh, themselves. Most programming languages allow you to uh, to call functions, and you pass in a string that's that's meant to be a regular expression, um, and it'll match it, it'll match that to a particular value. So we'll take a look at that on Wednesday. Um, so I'll see you guys then.